more to that. So a firestorm that we have been watching unfold in Ferguson, Missouri, after the grand jury's decision not to indict the officer involved in the fatal shooting of Michael Brown, and now growing questions over how leaders handled this from the get-go. Here's Missouri's Governor Jay Nixon, hours before the verdict was revealed. Together, we are all focused on making sure the necessary resources are at hand to protect lives, protect property, and protect free speech. But the governor's appeals for calm fell on deaf ears because here is what happened last night. This is definitely tear gas and it's being fired in all directions and it's going to clear the cloud. Dozens of businesses were burned and looted and destroyed. Gunshots, as many as 100, were heard in the streets amid fears that these violent protests may be far from over. Joining us now is Missouri's Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder. Welcome back to the program, sir. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you. So the big question is, uh, you know, a lot of people looking at the governor, looking at the administration, all of you, and asking, how could this happen, given the preparation and, and the discussion and the National Guard and all that? Martha, you know what? Uh, you know what an executive differs from a senator or a member of Congress? You actually have to do something. It is not enough to uh, stand at a press conference and, and mouth some lines that are prepared. You have to actually act. Now, what the vast majority of Missourians are asking this morning is we see the National Guard rolling in this morning, and I saw Adam Housley a couple of hours ago point to the bus that that brought them in on your air and he asked the question all Missourians are asking where were they last night uh, the the law-abiding citizens and business owners and taxpayers of Ferguson and the St. Louis region have a right to ask this governor to answer some questions and I'm gonna I'm gonna put one question out there that the media must put to him he 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 uh, uh, you know, declared a state of emergency almost a week ago and, and mobilized the National Guard. And then they were kept away at the crucial time while Ferguson burned. Why were they kept away? Now, now my question is... Do you know that to is, be a fact? Well, we, we know that they were kept away because they did not come in and stop that from the get-go. They were deployed at other parts of the St. Louis region. In the city of St. Louis, Mayor Slay had them at a couple of different uh, I mean, a couple of dozen different locations, I'm told, maybe other parts of St. Louis County. Why were they not in there at the first sign of an overturned police car or a smashed police car window with uh, a show of force that would have stopped this? And here's my question that the governor must answer. Is the reason that the National Guard was not in there because the Obama administration and the Holder Justice Department leaned on you to keep them out? I cannot imagine any other reason why the, the governor who mobilized the National Guard would not have them in there to stop this before it started. You know, I, I hear the anger in your voice, and I hear it in a lot of people's voices as they look at what happened. You know, I was saying this morning, it, when we cover stories like this, and there's so much buildup and so much preparation, I mean, often, it, you know, what happens in the end is nothing. And that would have been a really thankful outcome that everyone would have been pleased to see. And I was astonished to see that the absolute opposite happened last night, given the fact that there was a state of emergency in the state, the National Guard was being called in. And I think everybody looked at the TV last night and said, where are they? Now, how about this question? Not Nine o'clock last night, I mean, in the middle of the evening, uh, when those groups had been waiting and waiting in the streets for this decision to come down, do you think that that was a wise decision, and why do you think that happened so late in the evening? Greta, as the news broke yesterday afternoon that they would announce it at, at 8 o'clock central time last night, uh, a lot of us were scratching our heads. I, I, I think I would have chosen uh, 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, and had the grand jury meet accordingly to meet that time schedule rather than uh, an evening announcement when darkness has fallen and uh, the bad folks who uh, did so much destruction last night have several hours to do their worst. Uh, it seems to me that a 6 a.m. announcement would have been much better. Uh, that's not second guessing. A lot of us were saying that yesterday, yeah. but I don't know what went into that. You should know, and your listeners should know, your viewers should know, that there is no communication by this governor with the rest of us in state government. I sent 
uh, a staff member of mine down the hall on the same floor to the governor's office about an hour ago to inquire about a brief before I went on your air. And I have nothing, Martha. That, that, I have nothing. That's amazing. I, I mean, the fact that the lieutenant governor cannot get any answers from the governor, I, I think, is a pretty shocking state of affairs in it's, the state it's of New York. It's been this way. It's been this way for the six years of his governorship, with about four or five exceptions that were not nearly as serious as this when they did reach out to me for some pending announcement. All right. So, what, you know, the other thing that I want to ask you about before I let you go, there were community groups that had pled with the police in, in Missouri and in Ferguson in particular, that they didn't want them to wear riot gear. They didn't want them to incite, you know, any form of, of aggressiveness because they thought that that was going to be make things worse. Is that part of this as well? Did, did the police go too far in, you know, sort of backing down that show of force at the beginning when all of this came out last night and acceding it, it, to their demands? I suppose it could have been. I'm not, I'm not much of one for negotiating with violent protesters and terrorists. And, and, and if you're going to have the National Guard deployed and a state of emergency declared and then hold them back, I say the governor owes the people of Missouri a lot of explanations on that beginning this morning. You're right about that, sir. Uh, and let's hope we get those answers from Governor Nixon uh, this morning, because there are a lot of very serious questions about what happened last night. We thank you very much. We hope you get some answers, uh, that you can go down the hall and get some answers from your own governor, to whom you are the lieutenant governor in your state. This is incredible. Thank you, sir. Thank Good luck you, to you Martha. and all of your people in your state.